Light and heat from the sun and energy from wind, water, hot rocks and plants can produce electricity. Solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, biomass, as well as wave and tidal energies are the main sources of renewable energy. Some renewable energy can be generated where the energy is used without the need for transmission lines. Advances in renewable technologies mean more low emission energy will be available for use more cheaply. Fossil fuels like coal and gas will continue to supply the bulk of our energy needs well into the future. Coal, for instance, is cheap, plentiful and accessible. It is a reliable source for the generation of electricity. Gas can be extracted and used cost-effectively to generate power too. The challenge is to find cleaner ways of using these fossil fuels. Generating electricity from the burning of coal produces a waste greenhouse gas called carbon dioxide, or CO2. New technology allows the CO2 to be captured before it escapes into the atmosphere and put back where it came from, underground. This is called carbon capture and storage and is part of the story in a low emission energy future. So, how does this happen? One way is by using post-combustion capture, which can be retrofitted to existing power stations. In post-combustion capture, the CO2 is captured after the coal is burnt. Gases leaving the boiler are cooled and then passed through an absorbing solution that captures CO2. The carbon dioxide that has been captured is then removed from the absorbing solution by steam, allowing the absorbing solution to be reused. Finally, the carbon dioxide is compressed and cooled, forming a liquid ready for transport and storage. Another technology that can also be retrofitted to existing power stations is oxyfuel technology. Oxyfuel technology, or oxyfiring, can achieve near zero carbon dioxide emissions from coal-fired electricity. Oxyfuel combustion burns the coal in almost pure oxygen rather than normal air, producing a flue gas that is free of nitrogen and mainly made up of water vapour and CO2. This makes carbon capture easier because there is much less flue gas and the concentration of CO2 is much higher than a normal coal-fired power station. The water vapour is removed by cooling and suppressing the flue gas. The CO2 that remains is then turned into liquid for later transport and storage. Gasification is a different approach where, along with steam and oxygen, Coal is fed into a gasifier where it is heated to a high temperature under pressure. It is then turned into a gas called syngas, which then goes through a cleanup process to remove substances such as sulphur. The syngas, now consisting mainly of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, is split into its two component gases, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The hydrogen, a zero-emission energy-rich fuel, can be used to fire a gas turbine to generate electricity or used as a source of fuel for motor vehicles. The gasification process can capture up to 90% of emissions, with the primary waste product being water vapour. The carbon dioxide that is captured and compressed is transported from power stations by pipeline and injected 500 metres or more underground into a porous rock strata like sandstone. This rock strata sits under a layer of impervious rock through which liquids and gases cannot pass. As the CO2 reaches the top of the sandstone, the impervious layer prevents the CO2 from rising any further. At this depth and pressure, the liquid CO2 becomes trapped between the pores of sandstone. Over time, the CO2 gradually reacts with other naturally occurring minerals to form stable minerals such as calcium carbonate. Once in this form, CO2 cannot enter the carbon cycle. The other fossil fuel used in the generation of electricity is natural gas. Gas-fired power produces about half the greenhouse gas emissions of equivalent-sized coal-fired power stations. 
coal seam gas, or methane, a form of natural gas, is trapped in coal beds by water and ground pressure. The gas lines the open fractures between the coal, called the cleats, and the inside of pores within the coal, called the matrix. To extract the gas, wells are drilled to depths of 300 to 500 metres. The top section of the well is cased with steel and cement to prevent the loss of water from any upper aquifers. A special rotating blade is lowered to the bottom section of the well to drill out cavities in the coal seams. This production zone is then lined with alternating slotted and blank steel casing. Water released from the coal is pumped from the well. This lowers the water pressure in the coal seam and allows the gas to separate from the coal and flow into the well. The gas and water rise to the surface through separate pipes. The water is treated for reuse or reinjection back underground. The gas passes through a separator near the wellhead to remove any water traces before being piped to a processing facility to be compressed and dried. Gas can also be piped directly to households and industry for heating water and cooking. Once dried, the gas is used in gas-fired power stations to turn large electrical turbines. Two petajoules of gas produces enough electricity to power 10,000 homes. To help supply world energy demand, the gas can also be piped to a liquefied natural gas plant, where, from there, it is exported all around the world. New technologies in energy production are only part of the story for a low emission future. By clever energy efficient building design and reducing energy used in homes and businesses, energy resources are conserved and emissions are reduced. Energy efficient light globes in homes, factories and office blocks, solar panels for heating water and extended eaves in homes and factories for cooling are just some of the solutions. The minerals and energy industry too plays a role in reducing and conserving energy through the use of energy efficient equipment by redesigning buckets of the drag lines that collect the waste rock in coal mines, installing more efficient engines in mining equipment, being self-sufficient in the energy they require, and planting trees and grasses to absorb carbon. Renewable energy, new fossil fuel technologies, and energy efficiency are all essential elements to a low emission energy future.